Hey guys, how you doing today? My name is Jeff Shoemake. I go by Drizo, and this is my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you could finally join me. I've made several short videos and I'm gonna start getting in depth with full videos. Uh, this is a passion that I've had greatly for a long time. I am a Twitch streamer, by no means popular in any way, shape or form. I'm lucky to get two or three viewers. I have a full-time job. Uh, I am a recovery pastor. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I have a wonderful wife, I have five amazing stepkids, and I have one of my own on the way. That being said, why do I use black powder? Five years ago, I was charged with domestic violence, a class A misdemeanor, with a woman that I was not married to, I was not in a relationship with, and has never been on a lease with me. The courts didn't care, I was also young and dumb, and I didn't have tens of thousands of dollars to go to court. I took a plea deal. At the time, I thought and was told that after five years, I could own firearms, no questions asked. Two months ago, I found out that uh, I am barred for life. I am treated the same as a felon, and as a matter of fact, I'm actually treated worse than a felon because I know many felons personally that have changed their life around like I have devoted their life to Christ, or even just changed their life around and try to better themselves. They have restored their gun rights. Now, a felon can't vote, can't get a, you know, apartment or a house in some places. A lot of stuff's restricted from them. For me, I can do everything. I can even go serve on jury. I just can't own firearms. For something that is not even on the books, um, unfortunately, in this world, this world revolves around money. If I had enough money, I could have got off and been proven not guilty as I was. However, because of that, and I do respect America. I love America, guys. I, I am a proud American. I have had family members and friends serve in the military. <coughs> not the one today, but uh, I would like to respect those laws. And there is a process which I can go through in the next year or two to restore my gun rights. That being said, I still have a duty by God and even by our government to protect my family. I have a God-given right and a God-given basically promise upon marrying my wife that I would lay my life down for her and our children. And I still plan to do that. And I have found some ways to do that. And so today I'm gonna to show you all the necessities of the things that I use for self-protection for personal defense that is legal according to the United States government and is legal according to the state of Texas. If you live in a place like California or New York or even Georgia, I'm sorry, but this is not gonna apply to you. Uh, maybe one thing I have will apply to you, the rest of it, you're out of luck and I'm very sorry and I hope that you get out of the states as fast as possible. As far as I know, Texas and Oklahoma are the ones that I can speak to directly. I have talked to two A lawyers. I have watched several YouTubers. That doesn't account for much. I'm one too. And I have gone over probably, I want to say 40 or 50 hours of reading legislation, government documents, rules, regulations on how and how to do this properly. I use black powder revolvers. Texas literally copied the U.S. government's gun laws, word for word, almost identical. Anything made before 1899 or replica thereof that does not take modern centerfire or rimfire cartridges or ammo that is not readily accessible through modern means of markets, which basically means black powder and black powder cartridges. You can't find them anywhere except for special people that sell them because they load them themselves. They're extremely expensive. It's cheaper to do it yourself. I unfortunately do not have the budget to do that because you have to start out with about a thousand to twelve hundred dollars just to start making the stuff and then you have to learn how to make it the right way so it doesn't explode. So I use uh, cap and ball revolvers. Now there is two ways to go about this. You can buy a double action from the 1890s. They don't make replicas of those anymore. They can't do that and you can find black powder cartridges and make them. Like I said, costs a lot of money. The gun itself doesn't cost a lot. It's about four or five, six hundred dollars. If you get a Colt, it's gonna cost you several thousands of dollars. 
this is going to be geared at the people who have made mistakes in their lives, like I have, and been wrongly accused, didn't understand what they were signing up for, and they still know that they have a duty to protect themselves and their families. Under the Constitution, I have the right to bear arms, and the government even recognizes this. In the state of Texas, after five years from release of probation, parole, or imprisonment, you can legally own a firearm in your house in the state of Texas. You can never bring it outside the house. You can never go to the gun range with it. You basically you don't even know if it works. And so you should just go with a revolver. <laughs> that way you know it's gonna fire every time. Semi-automatics, semi -automatics, I'm sorry, can jam. They can do stuff. So unless you have a whole bunch of land, um, it's really hard to do that. Now, as I said, in about two years, a year or two years, I have, can take some steps to restore my gun rights. And at that time, who knows where this YouTube channel will be. That being said, if you've been convicted of a felony or a class A domestic violence, whether you did it or you didn't do it, and you changed your life around, I wanna show you some things that have helped me feel more secure. Not as much if I would have a modern handgun, um, but I know that I can get out of a jam and I can protect my family if someone ever tries to come against us. So, that being said, I carry black powder revolvers. Now, um, the one that I daily carry is a 1860 Pieta snub nose revolver. It is, it fits in a Houston holster, just like this, and this is how big it is. Um, it weighs almost two and a half pounds closely. I can carry this on my hip concealed in an inside the waistband holster like this one comfortably. Um, I only load five rounds. It does have six cylinders, but I only load five and I leave it on an empty cylinder. Why do I do that? These guns didn't really have safeties on. Now you can put them in between the cylinders. If it slips, it's going off. I don't want to risk that. Five shots of a 44. This is a 454 lead ball. So it's essentially a 44 Magnum. I have a 44 Magnum snub nose that fires at about a 300, 357 Magnum projectile. This will stop anybody in their tracks and it goes off, it's louder than anything at the range. As a matter of fact, I was at the gun range a couple weeks ago, only firing my black powder revolvers, keep in mind you, I don't touch anybody else's guns, I don't go near anybody, I fired these only. So, there was a gentleman with a 410 uh, judge, a Taurus judge fires 410 shotgun shells and he fired his and he looked over at me when I fired mine. He goes, good God, what was that? This thing makes a lot of noise. It's very loud. It sounds like a cannon and it, it's devastating to stop. Now, are there downsides? Yeah, you have to have primers and, you, and I'll get into all that here in a minute. Um, but this particular one uh, is an 1860. I got this for Midway USA. It actually arrived by the post office and it was delivered right to my front door. This one cost me $460 with tax shipping and all straight to my house. Came just like this. It came with, as you can see, there's no loading lever. So it came with a ramming rod, which I use. Some people say they don't do it. They get other than stuff. Guys, this is on a budget. Okay. This is to protect your family and to still have money to do whatever. So I use this thing, it's great, it packs them in good, I don't have anything to worry about. $460, you can get yourself an 1860 three inch snub nose Pieta revolver, uh, the Houston pleather <laughs> uh, inside the waistband holster, cost me about $21. So, you know, under 500 bucks, you have your gun in your holster. Um, now that being said, if that's too much, which I understand, that's, that's sometimes too much for people. I remember when I had my first firearm before all this stuff happened to me, I had a Glock 22, which was a 40 cal. I bought it with a laser sight for under $400. For $420, I had <coughs> 40 rounds of ammunition with it. <coughs> you can't find a Glock for less than 500 something dollars now. So, <coughs> excuse me, that being said, if that's too much, out of your price range, because there's still many other things that you have to buy in order to use these guns, load them, and clean them. I have an 1851 uh, 44 caliber, seven and a half inch barrel. This is a brass model. Now, it's not true brass, because if it's true brass, this gun would last a year and be out. It's a molded, some kind of brass, but it comes with the loading lever, okay? So it's much easier to load. It's a half cock, just like, just like the rest of them, and it spins freely. Um, it is unloaded. I wouldn't do that on a video. <clears throat> this one with the holster, well, without the holster, I'm sorry, 
with the gun itself, uh, $250 with tax and shipping straight to my front door. You can own this gun for $250, okay? The holster costs $21. It's a cheap leather holster. I can hook it to my belt. I've got a shoulder holster. I can put it under here for in the winter time, all that stuff. That being said, guys, this is Texas. I can legally conceal carry these weapons or open carry them except for restricted areas, obviously. Post offices, government buildings, courthouses, stuff like that. Um, these are both of the two of the best options I've found for affordability in two different price ranges. Now, with the long one, the seven and a half inch barrel, you can, if you can find somebody to do it, they can actually cut and crown it down to three inches or four inches for about $150. So you're still looking at $400 uh, for a concealable handgun. It's about $6 cheaper, but to me, it's just it's good to have this. And honestly, both of them do devastating damage. Now, that being said, what do you need for all this stuff? Uh, first things first, I realize that loading cap and ball revolvers is very time consuming. There's a gun range I go to and they have a 20 minute ceasefire every 20 minutes. <laughs> I can get through two cylinders loading the black loose black powder, <coughs> either a lubricated wad or bore butter and a bullet, and then a percussion cap. I can get through 10 rounds. It's not a lot. Uh, most of the time when I go to the range, I only shoot about 35 to 40 rounds through each one. I'm not there to have fun. It is fun, it is enjoyable. Uh, firing guns is, is probably one of the most exciting things in the world to do for myself and for many, many other people. But I'm there to train and get accurate. And so you understand with black powder, it's gonna seize up. Black powder seizes, uh, it's frangible, it, 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 it rusts very quickly. So after about 35, 40 rounds, that cylinder's not moving and I'm not gonna sit there with ballistol or gun cleaner or bore lube and try to redo it again just to stay out there and fire. It's gonna take me about an hour and a half with two guns to get through that amount of firing, uh, just regular loading them. That being said, I started watching this guy on YouTube. Uh, it's called Guns of the West. Dustin Weininger, I'm probably saying that wrong and I'm very sorry. He made this amazing kit and apparently people have been making these kits for forever. He's the first one I saw. I got really in, in in depth as videos, and I thought they were cool, and he made this kit. And this is a paper cartridge kit. Uh, I can actually make bullets, you know, with the powder, the lead ball encased, and it's so much faster. I'm talking, instead of two cylinders through those 20 minute ceasefires, I can get through four. Now, to some people, it's like, oh, that's not a lot. Well, it is, because I'm, I'm utilizing my time to the best of my ability and I'm not wasting my time. So, and then, you know, I bought a standard 45 box uh, to case the bullets in, to hold them. And as long as I sit them in a place that's, you know, not super humidified, you know, I leave them in a, a closet or a bedroom door, but this is what they look like. I mean, this is, this is what they come out to. They're not gonna be perfect every time, but you know, they're kind of neat. So I do that. Now, those are very time consuming. Those take me a long, long time to make. Um, if and when, you know, apocalypse happens or whatever, like that's gonna be used for hunting. It's not gonna be used for self-defense. The first, you know, cylinder some, sure, probably. But I don't even load those when I go to carry it, whether I'm going to church, whether I'm going out with my family, anything like that. I don't load those. I load it standardly because it keeps the humidity down with the wads that I use. Now, for everything, this thing costs $35, uh, straight from Dustin. You can order Shea Line at Guns of the West. I highly recommend it. It's really useful, actually. Um, and it, it teaches you, it makes you appreciate it more. It makes you appreciate the, the time that went into doing all this stuff back then. And especially with people in my situation or people that are felons, which is our only option. Now, once you purchase the gun, and the holster, and say you get a bullet kit and a 45 kit, you still have to have everything else. I use uh, Pyrodex. 
Triple FG, which is pistol caliber, it has a P on it. Uh, you can get this anywhere. I get it at Bass Pro Shops, typically where I ordered from. It's like $26.99 for one pound. I've had these guns for about two months now. I still haven't gone through the first one. So, and uh, I go to the gun range every Monday. So you'll need your black powder. Um, you'll also need your lead balls. Um, Hornady is by far the best. I wouldn't recommend anything else out there, mostly because I don't know of anything else out there. Um, you can get these on Bash Pro. Shields is the best place I found out. They're the best price there. I think I saw them for $12.99. These are $20 for 100 rounds, uh, four, five, four. If you're using 44 calibers, don't mess around with other ones. People say, find your right one for you because there's all different kinds. 454 is what you use. That's about how big they are. Uh, it doesn't look that, see if I can get my face out of focus to focus in on that. Yeah. So uh, it, what it'll do is it'll shave a ring off when you pack it in there. And that's how you know it's good and tight in there. Now, what else you need and what I would highly, highly recommend is these felt lubricated wads. You can buy these at Bass Pro Shop. Bass Pro Shop's kind of the best place for this stuff. Most places, unless you're in rural areas, you're gonna have to special order this stuff to the store. It's free though. It's like $10 for a hundred of them. It's not a whole lot of money, but keep in mind, if you're going to the range once a week like I am, you're probably gonna go through a hundred rounds in three weeks. Uh, so I would stock up, uh, especially right now, because the last time I ordered uh, lead balls, it took, it took almost a week and a half for them to get to me. Uh, normally they're there within three or four days. So that tells me that there's a supply issue, but you can buy these anywhere. Lubricated felt wads. Don't get dry ones because then you got to lubricate them yourself and it's a pain in the butt, but they're like $10. <clears throat> Next, you're going to want a powder measurer. Now, I just got one of these cheap little ones off Amazon. I think it cost me like $14 or $15. Uh, it's got the exact you know distance on it. Now, for mine, I load 30 grains. And one thing I did learn from Dustin is you, you measure by volume, not by weight. So when it gets up to here, that's 30 grains. You gotta tap it and make sure it's flat and flush because sometimes you'll fill and it's over and it's like, oh, that's too much. But if you tap it down, it's not enough. I use 30 grains. The historical one, I believe is 25 grains. 30 grains produces the most power and it's not so overwhelming for the gun that it'll hurt it. Um, I found that it gives it about close to 900 feet a second. That's about a 357 Magnum out of a two inch snub nose. I'm running a three inch. If I run it out of the seven and a half inch barrel, I'm probably touching a thousand feet a second at a 30 grain load. So after that, you're gonna want, uh, this is not a necessity. This is something that I got. Again, I got this off Amazon. This is a called a nipple clipper. This is what you use to put your percussion caps on. Uh, it makes it a lot faster. You can load, I think, 15 or 16 with one end, 15 so you can get through three cylinders before you have to redo it again. Percussion caps are so small and, and I'm, I'm six foot three, I'm a pretty big dude. It's, it's hard to get them in there. Uh, this makes it a lot faster. Uh, now that being said, I've noticed that there are two kinds of percussion caps on the market. As far as I know for pistols, you have yours. And I use number 10s by the way. On all these pistols, you're gonna use number 10s. No matter what, some people will say use a number 11 and pinch it down. That doesn't seem safe to me, especially if we're talking about us carrying this and not going to the, to the range and shooting. Uh, your life's depending on this. You don't wanna to have to modify stuff. You have the CCI number 10 percussion caps. Uh, these are the ones I can find the most. Now, granted, I can't find these anywhere. Matter of fact, I had to go on Gun Broker and I found a gun shop like up in the Northeast that'll sell these to me. Um, what I looked the price of these were supposed to go for is they're supposed to go for $10, $9.99 for a hundred of them. You get a hundred in each little container. Because they don't exist anymore, I mean, they still make them obviously, but people have raised the price. Now there's a gun a place on Gun Broker where I found them and they give me, they got me 500 of them for about a hundred dollars with shipping. I'll take it, you know, uh, that's, that's a good deal. I think it's fair for them. You know, most people are, some people are charging for, for 300 of them, they're charging like $170 or $180. They're just trying to screw you. Now, these are the most common ones that you can find. If you can find them, I would personally recommend the Remingtons. I haven't even used these. These are the only ones that I can find. But all the studying and research I've done, these fit way better and they just work overall better. I haven't, I've had two or three misfires in, I would probably say 250 rounds. 
Now that's more calm, you know, that's, that's a lot more common than most modern handguns, but again, we work with what we got. These I've heard that you're never gonna misfire as long as your nipple is, is clear and clean and it's, it's, got a, it's got a good bore to go through and hit the spark to the black powder. So if you can find these, I found these at Bass Pro, they were finally online and I was going to order my bullets in black powder again and I was like, oh, let me just pick up a hundred of them real quick. They were like $12.99. Uh, you're gonna want a spoon. <laughs> Now, it's so weird because I use this to get the black powder out and dump it into the tip of it um, or to make the bullets. But what I also use this for is for the percussion caps because even though I do have this, it doesn't seem to seat the CCIs perfect. So I'll go through with the back of the spoon and I'll push them like that on each one of the cylinders. And that works out pretty well. You're also going to want a tiny, tiny, tiny flathead screwdriver. These things, how does he have screws in them? The, the type of screws that are in here are not modern screws. Again, these are Pieta revolvers. These things are made in Italy. It's not going to be the modern kind of screws that we have over here. Um, I found out that this little thing I just found in the drunk drawer at the house. It's a little flathead. And after, after I fire or before I load to go out, I'll tighten every screw down just to make sure it's good. They're not, they don't move a whole lot, but if you leave them unchecked, like the screws will fall out, it's a disaster. Some people have talked about putting lock on them, you know, uh, grease lock and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to do that in case I got to take it apart and clean it. Uh, next tool that is a necessity is going to be a nipple wrench. This is to take the nipples off on the back of the gun where you put the percussion cap. And I can actually probably take this off real quick and show you what it is. Oh, you're also going to want a mallet hammer if you get the snub nose. Uh, this is like a soft mallet. It's got like interchangeable ones. These are the two softest ones. And I use this to use the ramrod for the snub nose. Uh, if you get this, obviously you don't need it. Um, but I, it was very cheap. It was like $12, $13. These things come apart very, very easily. That's the cool part about it. It's basically three parts. It's nice. So these right back here, I don't know if you can see those very well. I can't get my camera to focus in. But on the back of each cylinder is a nipple. This little tool fits in there perfectly. Uh, there's no modern tool that takes them off. You can use some pliers. Um, pliers have worked the best for me, but as far as not scratching it up as much as possible, I would recommend the nipple wrench. Uh, you can get them on Amazon again, very cheap, straight to your house. They don't cost a lot. And they come with a nipple cleaner. So after you fire, especially the paper cartridges, you want to run those through each one of them because the hole is very, very tiny. And as a matter of fact, one of the misfires was my fault because when I cleaned it the first time, I didn't clean those out well and one of them misfired because it was clogged up. So one third of the errors I've had of human error, not the actual gun itself. And uh, that's it. So gun, Holster, okay, we don't ghetto carry here. All right, guys, we're doing this the legal way. Um, even though it's not illegal to do that, it's it's always better to have it in a holster. It's sturdy, it, it clips on your belt, it's good. You need your lead balls, bullet making kit if you so choose, felt wads, and black powder, percussion caps, your measure, and your loader. Now, <clears throat> there is one other thing that I carry because I only have five shots. I don't carry the seven and a half inch one unless it's the winter time and I can put a coat on and I can conceal it. This thing's very hard to conceal. Um, I have five shots. Now, I would consider myself a very good shot. Uh, am I some gunslinger? No, but I am a very good shot to where I am very accurate. But that being said, I only have five shots. If something else happens, now this is legal for most people, I believe. This is a Karamba. Uh, this is a MTech USA Karambit. It comes with a sheath that actually holsters. It's an inside the waistband holster, so it clips on and then your belt goes through it. And I actually set it back at my, uh, what was that, six o'clock? Seven o'clock, whatever. I don't know those terms. Anyway, so it's got a ring on it and it just pulls out nice like that. Most people like want to carry like, no, you don't carry like that. You actually, you want to leave it to where it's like there because if your finger gets caught in here it looks cool but it's not practical uh you're gonna hurt yourself if you ever have to use this thing i carry this as my backup um and i'd personally recommend it uh some people say oh it's a crown it's a it's a hooked blade it's not gonna be good this isn't 
this will kill you. Like flat out, this will kill you. There's no question about it. But it's really an intimidation factor. Someone sees you with a clawed blade like that, they're gonna be like, mm, I don't think so. Um, that being said, guys, this is just the breakdown in the first video that I'm putting out. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to show you how to clean them because I'm gonna come back from the range and how to make some bullets. Guys, I appreciate you watching. I'd love it if you gave this a thumbs up. If you shared it with someone, you know, that's in a situation where they have a domestic violence charge or they have a felony, and they, they firmly believe that God has given the Second Amendment to protect themselves, this is the legal way to go about it in Texas and Oklahoma. I can't say for any other state because I don't want to mislead you. Um, this is a passion of mine, and I want to help as many people as possible. And one day, eventually, I hope I can get this stuff revoked so we can use our God-given rights because we have changed our lives around. Like I said, I'm a pastor. I have five amazing kids. I have a wonderful wife. I have another child on the way. I have a full-time job. I work very hard. I provide insurance for my family. I'm a productive member of society. I'm on security at my church. But the law says that I can't own a firearm to protect my family in our time of need. The one thing that I do tell people is that the best Sundays that I have is when I never have to pull my gun. And so far, my best Sunday has happened every Sunday. I don't want to have to use these firearms, but in the world we live in today, it's we don't have a choice. And I believe you should be responsible and you should carry with authority, but know that you're given right. So again, guys, thank you so much. I'm Drizo. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. God bless you guys. I look forward to interacting with you guys in the comments. Like I said, give me a thumbs up, share it with somebody. If you're not subscribed, it's always free on YouTube. And uh, y'all take care and y'all have a wonderful, wonderful night.